The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Great Garment Graphics Seminar today, Get Your Head in the Game, Increase Profits with a Cat Press. My name is Ken Chadwick, and I'll be the presenter today. Today's Tuesday, January 17th. Follow along with us here. My name is Ken Chadwick. I have over 25 years in the decorated, um, exper decorating experience. I started out many years ago as a stalls customer. Uh, I morphed into a equipment sales selling um, embroidery machines, automatic screen printing presses, uh, direct-to-garment printers, lasers, and uh, I'm currently a Group Stalls Sales Alliance sales representative, and I cover New England in northeastern New York. Uh, our customers today I'll work anything from a local or regional trade show, uh, imprinted sportswear apparel, uh, webinars, boot camps, presentations. I could be anywhere from a major manufacturer, retailer, uh, batting cages. I've been to prisons, uh, e-commerce, uh, to people that are doing this as a part-time job when they've transformed either their basement or their uh, garage into a business. Our usual format here is to start out with a couple of uh, polling questions, but basically let's review what we're going to do here. How, how heat pre printing headwear can increase your business, the, some of the different techniques we're going to use, and uh, creating some headwear for the different niches. If we can go with our polling questions as opposed to the uh, current political climate, don't worry, these questions will ask about your experience and are in, in your in-house equipment. Uh, while a webinar is a great forum to speak to large groups of people, the downside is that as being as the speaker, I can't see the audience reaction or determine your level of experience. So these two polling questions will assist me learn more general information about you. And if we can go to the first polling question. Okay, the first poll is in progress. So our first question is, how many years have you been in business? So we'll give it um, a couple more seconds here to get everybody's vote in. Okay, so the results. We have 15% have been in business one to three years, 38% four to six years, 12 percent, 7 to 10 years, 8 percent, 11 to 14 years, and 27 percent have 15 plus years. That's great. Wow. Good for you. Congratulations. Okay. And the polls are closed. We're all set, Ken. Okay. And then you want to go to the second polling question is the equipment yeah. that they have, sure. please. Okay. Next question. What equipment do you own? So go ahead, everybody. Vote on what you own. And then we'll give it a few seconds here to let everybody get their votes in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close it. And we're going to share. So 60% of people own a heat press. That's great. 7% a cat press. 10% vinyl cutter. 7% print cut system, and 17% own embroidery machine. Cool. What was the first number again for the heat, the regular heat press? 60% of our attendees own a heat press. Terrific. Okay, cool. Okay, very yeah. good. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that gives us a, a, a handle. It sounds like we have a more experienced um, group of uh, people attending the webinar and uh, with, a, with a fair amount of equipment here. Okay, why do you need a cap press? Okay. The first thing is it's very difficult to heat press onto a curved surface with a standard heat press, either 11 by 15, 16 by 16, or 16 by 20. There's obvious obvious problems there. Okay, so you really have to you really have to have a cap press. Okay, how many different kinds of hats do we have here? We start looking at the different hats, and we have it for the athletic business or uh, the outdoor business, hunting, fishing, camouflage, resorts, um, campgrounds, marinas, the security and safety business. 
if you look at the hats that we have on our screen, you can see that it'd be, you'd be very hard pressed to utilize a flat uh, standard cap press to put any of these designs on the hats. So if you look at the decorating styles that we've used historically, um, embroidery is probably the most common embellishment technique for a hat. And in the mid-90s, they changed. Instead of having a flat table and making the, the front two panels embroidered, they started to put on uh, frames uh, actually with a cap driver, and you could now embroider a finished cap. In the United States, that's the, the largest market for us. And most ma major manufacturers who make caps offer this service, but they manufacture they cap their caps to fit their hoops. Okay, In the field, we don't have that option. Whatever hat comes in or whatever hat your customer wants, that's the one you have to decorate. Okay. The benefit of the embroidered hat is it's perceived as, a, as high end, and the embroidery obviously allowed you to have the ability to decorate above the seams. The lower stitch count in a smaller decorating space, uh, that, that's what the big deal with the embroidery. And typically, you would have to digitize your design from the center out to uh, negate the center seam of the, of the hat so you wouldn't have to, it, you wouldn't have to pucker it. Okay. Where the heat press comes in is your available space to embroider is typically a finger up from the visor and a finger down from the eyelets in the cap. So you have a very limited space. You'd have to have an embroidery machine, and on top of it, you'd have to have an embroidery machine with a cap attachment. So most of the people that have a home embroidery machine are kind of shut out from doing cap embroidery. Caps are a low cost item, wholesale cost of hats are very reasonable, and there's a much higher profit margin. You can see hats in the stores for anywhere from $20 to $25. They're typically made overseas unless there's an event. Now our marketplace is we can capitalize on an event. Domestic production is based on events. You can make a hat for a baseball team or a football team overseas because of the name of the team and the colors aren't typically changing. But if you only got two weeks between a playoff game and a Super Bowl, the World Series, those hats are made domestically. We, by using the heat press, we can change that. We can make graphics for events by either supplying, excuse me, graphics from a, um, a vinyl cutter or from a, a print cut system or using some sort of a film. Either Stalls or Transfer Express or a company similar to that will provide either transfers or film that you can heat apply. But you do need to have a cap press to adhere to the curved surface. There are different types of caps. There's a six panel hat, five panel hat, low profile. There's foam front hats, twill hats, there's trucker styles, youth styles bucket hats, military styles, uh, safari hats. And so this gives you an idea what your available space is for decoration, the bill, the back, the side, the front. And one of our concerns is that most people are not willing to think outside the box. They look at the front two panels of the hat. They either embroider a logo, heat press a logo there. The logos that you heat press will go over seams today. The technology has changed. but you can also have mixed media. You can embroider the front of the hat like people typically do, and then you can heat press by using your curved cap press and put a design, the back of the hat, the back strap of the hat, the side of the hat, even on the top of the hat on the curved area. Some people now are starting to use either vinyl or twill and heat apply or a CAD print, heat apply on the top of the visor. Later on, we'll tell you about a customer who has actually taken a design from his print cut system, took a photograph of his family, and heat pressed it underneath the visor of his cap. So there's a portion of the cap that people haven't thought about using decorating before. But when you start looking at all these different size hats, you can't just use one heat press to do it. You're not going to have a heat press for every kind of hat. So that brings us into platens. The bottom platen of a cap press can change to accommodate the different heights and sizes of your decorating area. And as you see, as the, the, the hats change, we 
in our industry, we look at the probably the under 40 years of age have the mid profile or the hat, the low profile hat that that more conforms to your head, and you see that the front area is differently than the the trucker hat or the John Deere look that we just saw. But you see how all those sizes change with a print cut system or a vinyl cutter. You can cut a graphic an inch high to two and a half inch wide, or do something on the bill. You have opportunities that you can use that cap press to do. And here are some of the lower profiles you see as the numbers change. Lots of different varieties in, in hats. And these are just the most popular ones. There's a lot of niche caps as well. You have to start looking at all the different uh, types there from you know, the youth things with uh, skateboarding and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and bandware and FBI and fire and military, sorority, fraternities, all that kind of stuff as well. And here's a, a low crown hat. You remember, some of us go back to the days where people would actually take a baseball card and stick it underneath the front two panels to make their hat be higher. And of course, we deal with visors as well. They're a little harder to hoop in an embroidery machine, but they're very easy to do with a, with a cap press. Here is the cap press, and you can see that it has a curved surface which will accommodate the cap. The visor goes directly into the air, and there's a little red handle down at the bottom, and that takes away the slack at the bottom or the back of the hat with the visor sticking in the air. This particular cap press is an auto clam. It has a dual timer, so it has a preset. For instance, if you're going to preheat your cap for, say, four seconds or five seconds, and then to apply your graphic might be a different uh, number in terms of 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds. You don't have to keep resetting or holding it while the beeper is going off. And when the counter hits zero, it pops up by itself. These are examples of some of the uh, platens that are available as an option. And these platens will help to accommodate the different size caps that we that we showed you previously. The standard size is three and a half by six and a half. That's what it comes with. And then we have different sizes that go from two and three quarters to six and a half, four by six and a half, four by eight for the oversized um, caps. Or we have a, a rookie one for the low crowns is three by five and three quarters. So you can see that the, you know this this helps your job easier if you're going to accommodate a variety of caps. You can jury rig some of them, but you know you, you can't change four inches into two inches or two inches into four inches. So you got to be aware of what you're doing here. We will allow time at the end for any questions, or if anybody has questions in the interim, they're, they're certainly feel free to ask them. I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of caps using um, CAD cut material. This happens to be thermal film. It's uh, for years and years and years. It's been uh, Stahl's go-to material, and it will adhere to a variety of fabrics: cotton, cotton poly, polyester fabrics. And this one shows a two-color graphic on the front two panels on the right-hand side of a camouflage hat, and then on one of the back panels, you see a two-color number on the back. There's a lot of opportunities that are away from just the front two panels. Okay, it's one of the things that you can now use the locations of the crown, the side, the back, the strap, the visor, or under the bill. The combination of multiple locations allows you to increase your pricing. Your cost has not increased that dramatically. Your application time is still whatever it would be for the, for the front graphic or an addition, addition to your embroidery. The highest price I have heard retail for a cap, one cap, um, was $75. It was at a mall location. They charged $19 for a blank hat, then they charged so much per thousand stitches, and they went from there. So the profit margin is pretty good if some of these people were getting purchasing a wholesale cap for $275 or $3. Um, obviously, the extra added expenses at being at a mall uh, you know their overhead was pretty substantial, so they had to get $19 for the for the black the, uh, 
I'm sorry, the blank cap. Let's move on. These examples show you some different uh, applications. On the pink visor, the ribbon would have been a CAD print. That would have been uh, produced on a print cut system. Or you would call your manufacturer, ask for a CAD print, give them the design, and that is, that is heat pressed. You can see how the graphic um, is, is right on top of the seams. Not a problem adhering to it. And on the second cap, on the second visor, the American Legion is actually done um, with a CAD print. And then on the side of the hat is, a, is Team Perfect would be a team name. Multimedia gets more money using either multiple locations or multiple decorating ideas here. Um, we, we have the, the die cut uh, die cut lettering and we have the embroidered letter, low cost, low application, multiple applications, get a different look, different price. Now some of the things you're going to see at retail is this is a CAD print, heat applied onto material, and then the material is stitched onto a cap. It has been uh, adjusted by a laser. Let's make it look like the distressed look there. But there's probably less than 100 stitches on that cap on an embroidery machine. So there's a lot of opportunities, and once again, they could have done it different ways. You could you could supplement that particular design by putting a location or a date or an event some other place on the cap. Hey, Ken, can I interrupt you for one second? Absolutely. Okay, we had a question come in, and this is from Tim. Is there a way to get some dimension or thickness with vinyl on a hat? Can you trap some kind of material to get the thickness? So. We're thinking he's maybe talking about um, like a distressed look, perhaps like a flock or a twill. So maybe you could address that as well. Sure. If you want to get depth, uh, there's a couple of ways that you can achieve that. Um, obviously, you have a if you had an embroidery machine, um, some people would have used that uh, puff. Uh, they actually put foam underneath, and then they digitize a logo to make it appear three dimensional, with strictly a um, uh, a CAD cut or a vinyl cutter, you could use encapsulated twill. And uh, I think Great Garment Graphics has done previous webinars on that, or there might be something on one of Josh Ellsworth's um, websites where they physically will take a, a CAD cut vinyl des uh, design and encapsulate the twill. So it is not a sewn item. It's for people that don't have an embroidery machine or don't want to use an embroidery machine. So the twill or the felt or whatever material you're using is giving it depth and pile. It, is, it can be heat applied in some cases, but not all. And you or whoever you're doing your work with the, um, the cut system, uh, the vinyl cutter, you would be cutting your vinyl to be an outline, if you will, around the graphic that's made out of twill. And half of it would adhere to the twill and half of it would adhere to the cap. I know this is probably a hard concept to get without physically seeing it, but it's called encapsulated twill. You could get the same, as Deborah mentioned, you could get the same effect um, by using some of the thicker materials that are offered in the marketplace. Um, the flock material has, a, has like a velvety um, feel to it. If you want to get um, information about thicknesses, Stalls has a, um, they call it a Magalog. It's online. It's called CADCutDirect.com. And it's a little purple book. If you're already a customer. You probably have it. It's a little bit bigger than your hand. It's, uh, it's for the people that are buying their materials online. But it's a great reference tool because inside the book, it has the depth of all the CAD cut materials. Um, the unit of measurement is called microns. For those of us who are used to, you know, millimeters or centimeters or inches or whatever, it's a little different. But thermofilm thickness is 190 microns, where 
when you start look at some of the other different materials, you can use that as a reference point if you're familiar with that. Uh, for instance, Gorilla Grip is 80 microns, so less than half the thickness. Uh, fashion Film, 88 microns. So this book gives you a good idea. Uh, flock would be 480 microns. So that would give you an idea of the depth of flock versus the depth of thermofilm or glow in the dark or hologram or anything like that. So that book, I'm sure you can access it online as well. Um, there's also a CAD cut material called pebble puff and under heat and pressure it become it rises and pebble puff is between 800 and 1000 microns it's called cad cut pebble puff um, i hope that answers your your question glitter flake is like 325 microns reflective is 145 microns so that gives you an idea of the thicknesses of the material without having to, you know, stitch something or uh, have other equipment. Okay, does that answer your question, hopefully? Okay, if you have more questions, feel free to jump in. Um, on this next hat, the, the bulldog towing is uh, an example of reflective material. Easy to be on a easy to heat press it onto a hat with a cap press, and once again there are multiple kinds of reflective materials. Not all of them are certified. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, a group of usually national or federal, they have to have ANSI certifications. Usually that is a 3M material. It will affect the cost, but it meets all the standards for these organizations that have um, high visibility standards. They also have materials that are reflective materials that are not just silver. They have fashion film reflect that is a little bit um, lighter in weight. It comes in a variety of colors. Okay, so now you can make a hat that is reflective. Here's a great example of uh, two different mediums. The SA is sim stitch. It is a simulated stitch. There is not one stitch embroidered onto that cap. It is strictly a heat applied graphic. The SA is offset. And then Sahara is team perfect in another CAD cut material. There's another example where um, you could probably put the Sahara on with either a standard heat press or the cap press, depending upon the curve. A great example of multimedia where you did not have to embroider that. So your, your time to do that hat, uh, you know, you're probably talking about 12 to 15 seconds for the SA and the Sahara, you know, we're probably talking about 10 seconds application time. Excuse me. On the Brooks hat on the upper right-hand corner, um, that is Pebble Puff. Once again, that, uh, that little black piece of fabric would be able to come off. Um, Generally, you can slip that off over the, over the crown of the hat and heat press that on. But if you can't, you could still put it in the cap press. The Explorer Club on the bucket hat, that would be a CAD print, and then Team Perfect on the visor. So a lot of the times you have to plant the seeds to your customers. If they haven't seen it, they, in many cases, are not going to dream of it. So one of your jobs is to try to present as many opportunities or options as you can. If you have a design left over from a previous job on a left chest, or you might have a, a heat applied plastic all ink transfer on a gang sheet, here's a great opportunity to put it on something. Here's some tips and techniques. Just like regular heat press applications, you always want to preheat the substrate. You're either taking out wrinkles, taking out moisture, or both. You're preparing the surface. I know there's people that do 800 and 900 piece orders for Little League and so forth, and they claim that you know nothing ever falls off and they never preheat. That's a that's a short stop. Okay, uh, if you always preheat, you will take the moisture out. When you see the steam rise, 
That is the physical proof that you have taken the moisture out of the garment. Time, temperature, and pressure, the, the holy trinity of our business. You have to use the recipe for the materials that you're using. The time, temperature, and pressure with each item that is sold, typically the manufacturer will give you the time, temperature, and pressure. Through stalls, it'll say on hot tronics, use this number. If it's not a hot tronics, because they, most machines other than hot tronics do not have even steady heat, they want a higher number. Okay, so know what you're know what you're using for products. Um, always use a cover sheet. Typically, you're putting a cover sheet, either Teflon or craft paper, between the heating element and your graphic. If you get too hot, you can always take you can always um, melt your graphic. You don't want to do that. Vary your placement location, like that SA hat with Sahara. Instead of having the the two the, the two letters on a straight line, SA on the same plane, you can offset them, make them diagonal. You can have different opportunities to, to use those. Think of more places where you can put it. Vary your locations. Think about using the back strap of a hat. Think of um, the top of the visor, having something at an angle. Thinking under the visor, some people, if you have a, uh, a vinyl cutter or if you have numbers hanging around, you can put a player number underneath the visor of the hat and heat press it on. Think of more opportunities. At the end of the week, nobody's going to ask you how many hats you how many hats you decorated. They're going to want to know how much money you made. The more opportunities you have to take the same product and add locations, the more money you'll have to be able to um, pay your bills and hopefully be profitable. Hey, Ken, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. We got another question in. Sure. So this is from Tim again. When we press a polyester mesh hat, we get a sheen and sometimes a crease at the edge of the platen. Is there a way to eliminate this? Yes. Okay. Generally speaking, when you're getting the sheen, in some cases you are using a Teflon cover sheet. One way to negate that sheen and give it more of a matte finish is to use a piece of craft paper. And the craft paper uh, does not conduct the heat as much as the Teflon. The Teflon actually has contour in the sheet, if you will. It's, it's kind of to emulate screen printing. And the craft paper is, uh, I know ours anyway, is treated with a silicone. You can reuse it. You can use both sides of it. And sometimes what will happen is you can actually see the impression of your graphic on the silicone um, impressed craft paper. That would be indicative to me that you're using too much pressure. If you're seeing a, a heat line from your press, whether it's the standard press or a cap press, you're probably using too much pressure. Okay, so you want to back off. Also, sometimes with the polyesters, depending upon the materials, um, heat, especially in the red family, can lead to dye migration. So many of the materials out there have wiggle room. It will still adhere. The, the adhesives for the application will still flow, still stick to the fibers in your substrate, but you might want to dial down the temperature you can experiment with this on your own, five degrees, six degrees. Some of some of our materials have tremendous wiggle room and others have a smaller window. But usually you can be pretty much guaranteed that, you know, five degrees you, you would be okay. If you're getting the line, I would uh, dial down the, the pressure a little bit. What I consider the pressure, the way I teach it anyway, seems to be a simple way. Think of the number for the pressure. If you have a heat press that has a dial with the pressure, if this isn't totally accurate, but it's a good way to think about it, think of that number times 10 equaling pounds of pressure. It's not, it's not exactly that, but if the difference between 2 on your heat press and 4 on your heat press, if you think of that as 20 pounds versus 40 pounds of pressure, that's a lot of pounds of pressure on a small area. So you can see some of our materials will say use medium pressure. Most of your heat presses, the, the pressure dial goes from zero, which means you have no pressure, which you don't want to see, one to nine. 
And once you get up to the eight and nines, you're talking 80, 90 pounds of pressure, you'd be hard pressed to pull the handle down. Or at the very least, after you're done with that order, your arm will be very tired. You won't have to go to the gym that day, that's for sure. So part of our application tips is always preheat, be aware of your time, temperature, and pressure, uh, vary your locations with your graphics. Um, the other thing is to try some of these different uh, applications. Use, use SimStitch. Um, Varsity and Pro, Pro Block, two inch letters or numbers are approximately 33 cents each. Um, it's a low cost alternative to stitching. Um, Thermo Flock, five eighths inch high. You get 20, 20 letters for like $1.30. So these are relatively um, you know, low cost decorating solutions. The other thing that people have issues with sometimes is when uh, if they're not cutting the letters themselves, if they're getting them from a manufacturer and they're putting two or three letters on a hat, when they take the heat press and pull it down, the letters can move. Okay, We have a solution to that as well. We have thermo tape and pre-mass tape. The thermo tape is the uh, blue thin tape at the bottom. You can typically the, the production way to do this is to put your letters on the way you want them on the table before you put them on the press. You put them on the press, you still have the heating element there, you rush the heating elements there. You're, you're much better to, to put your 20 pieces, offset them, figure it out how it goes on one hat, then lay them all down on the side, put your tape across the middle of your letters or the middle of your design, lay it out, tack it down for about two seconds, take the tape off, and then press it for the regular period of time. Some people use the pre-mass tape, especially when they're using a longer name. If you're not using a, uh, a vinyl cutter yourself, because obviously you'd have the cover sheet there um, for the Mylar carrier, you can uh, say you're putting the word Barney down in one inch high letters, you know they're going to move. So you put the letters Barney down, you put the pre-mass tape over it, and then lift those letters all up in one fell swoop and then heat press it. Okay, so that gives you some more opportunities and some tips on how to do uh, separate separate letters. Uh, for people that have uh, embroidery machines, broken needles stop the embroidery production. Some of your uh, six panel hats have a pronounced thick center seam. Uh, due to so much material thickness in that crucial area, a fast moving needle can flex and snap and break the needle thereby stopping your production time so you have to go and replace the needle. You can effectively neutralize the height and thickness of the center seam by using a cap press. Even though you might be embroidering the job, if you took uh, 8 to 10 seconds at medium pressure by putting your hat in the cap press first, that will soften the fabric and compact the center seam. That process can make troublesome caps very embroidery friendly. Other uses for a cap press. Uh, many people use their cap, cap press for um, sleeve cuffs. They use it for shorts, the left, left leg of a short. They use it for bibs, for, uh, for baby wear or onesies. They use it to, um, to set up turtlenecks or mock turtlenecks. The curve of the cap press is perfect uh, for both those uses. And uh, don't forget to use uh, digital CAD print technology graphics for additional locations. There's lots of places uh, that you can put that stuff. Um, my name is Ken Chadwick. My email is kenwchadwick at yahoo.com. We have a couple of coming events for our um, Great Garment Graphics. Um, there's a couple of uh, major trade shows going on. Currently, there's one in Orlando, Florida, is the ASI show. Uh, next week, there's a major show in Long Beach, California. Uh, in my sales territory in New England, we have a um, Northeast and Printables Expo is coming up February 2nd and 3rd at uh, Foxwoods Casino. Uh, so I guess if there's, there's questions here, we can answer more questions. If anybody would like me to go over anything again, I'd be happy to do that or field some, field some questions from the audience, Deborah. Um, okay, so or Jody. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so here's a question from David. Can we get a copy of this presentation? Yes, David. I'll put it online on the Great Garment Graphics webinar after this. Um, and that's all the questions we have coming through right now. We took care of a few other ones that have already been answered. I think that's going to be it, Ken. Okay. So think, think of all the personalization you can do on demand. Um, a lot of companies in the past, I've dealt with companies like Bacardi Rum or horse shows or dog shows or boat shows where they would go to the event with the, the cap already embellished on the front two panels and then they would value add it by adding the date of the event or personalizing it with somebody's name. You want to have a unique value, whether it's resort wear or decorating specialty. Um, you also want to look at some of the other materials that you have. We mentioned flock. We mentioned reflective. Um, print cut, you can utilize unique materials, locations less restrictive. Um, rhinestones will be coming. There, you see them in, in hat applications. You'll be getting more information of that. Um, patches you can use, low stitch count, multiple options for decorating. Um, and I guess that's it. Well, thank you on behalf of Great Garment Graphics for participating, taking time out of your schedule today. If you have any questions, you can either um, Hey, Ken, we have a few more in. Do you, do oh, you great. Have? Sure. Okay. So first one is, what is a good source for sim stitch application? A source so, for the think, application or the source for the product? I, I'm thinking he meant the product. Uh, that, is a, um, that is a patented... Uh, product from uh, Stahl's ID Direct. It okay. comes comes in uh, letters and numbers that you can order them how you want, and you can also get some in different sizes for a product called Custom Made Easy. If people are going to do it like on a on a jersey, they even do split fronts, uh, script script with tails and block. And you can find out some of this information. We have done other webinars in the past for other decorating mediums, and I believe there might be one about SimStitch. Right. But it would be in Stahl's, Stahl's catalog, and it comes, I believe, in 18 colors. What a good memory you have. Okay. <laughs> How to determine the size of a platen attachment for the different cap sizes? Uh, in the catalogs, they will have the different size platen attachments, and you would be matching the size of the platen attachment with the available decorating space on the cap. If you go back in the presentation on some of the different cap sizes, it would tell you, um, you know, people usually start out with a standard attachment and then go up or down depending upon whether they're doing youth business, baby business, uh, oversized business. Um, you know, you, every cap manufacturer is different, and I can remember vividly a cap manufacturer executive coming to me at a trade show and throwing a, you know, tossing a hat to me and saying, look at the beautiful colors. Look at the shape of that hat. How come people aren't buying it? And I said to him, have you ever hooped it on an embroidery machine? And he goes, what do you mean? And my question to him was, how many blank hats do you think the public buys? I'm not talking about a manufacturer to a retailer. I'm talking about the public. Most people are not going in and saying, hey, I really need a navy blue hat to match my outfit. That's not what they're doing. They're having a hat that's decorated. What happened is when you, when you tried to embroider this hat, it did not easily fit on the hoops that the manufacturers made. There was too much material. Um, there wasn't enough material left to right, and there was too much material front top to bottom. And so it was very difficult to hoop, and the, and the embroiderers would actually go on a forum and say, don't use this hat because it's awful for our machines. So that's a great question. Who, whoever brought that question up is try to get, try to fit the cap to the platens that you have. And if you have a cap company that you you like and you do business with, and they have the colors, the delivery, the pricing, and so forth, just make sure that the hats fit the platens. But most platens are, are generally universal in size within those half inch or inch increments. The better it fits, the less wrinkles there are when you put the upper platen down. Okay, next question is, are inkjet transfers recommended for pressing? 
yes. Um, I have seen some of the inkjet transfers on caps. Um, the one I have the experience with myself would have been on whites and lights. Um, you have to remember that the, um, the life of the inkjet transfers or any of those types of transfers from, um, you know, bubble, inkjet, or whatever, don't have the same, um, you know, they wouldn't last a lifetime like, like, say, like thermofilm as an example. But the other side of the coin is most people aren't washing their hats. So if you, um, you can use an inkjet transfer, uh, the ones that are for whites and lights, I've seen the lasted quite some time. I think I have one that I carry with me. It's probably five or six years old. So I, I wouldn't hesitate with it uh, by using that. And you'd use a cap press to, to press it on the cap. Whites and lights, um, because the material is so thin, you have to think about whether you're using it on a six-panel hat with the center seam. It will go over it. It will adhere it. But another big tenant of our industry is when you have a six-panel hat, you want to heat press it first because now you're neutralizing the depth of that center seam. You want to make it flat. So the more flat you have it, the better your graphic will adhere to it. Okay, one more, two more questions. So out of all the applications you covered, which one has the greatest profit margin? The one that has the greatest profit margin, the one that is most unique. It isn't, it isn't sometimes the, it isn't how you always put it on the hat, it's what you're putting. The, a, a neat graphic sells. It isn't that you're putting on Joe's Bar and Grill. Uh, think, think to like a restaurant chain like the Hard Rock Cafe. Um, you know, how many people have sweatshirts, hats, because it's in a location that people want to, you know, kind of brag that they've been to, you know, Barcelona, the Caribbean, whatever. It isn't that people are going there to eat the food. You know, they're looking to, to have that because it, it proves that they were there or somebody bought it for them for a gift. Um, I would say my, my own experience would be something that has multimedia Something, some design that pops, something that has designs all over it, something that everybody doesn't have. Uh, you know, it's not a definitive answer in saying, okay, this hat, you know, this one sells the most. There are some very, very strong headwear companies out there that make their own hats. They make their hats to fit their equipment, whether it's heat press or whether it's embroidery. They make small designs, typically no bigger than an inch and seven eighths in height, on a low profile cap, and they sell their hats for twenty-five dollars retail every day of the week, probably ten dollars, twelve dollars blank. You can you can get them, but it's their designs, it's their digitizing or their graphics or their their print cut artwork that makes the makes the design pop. I would think something with a puff, something unique. Um, I've seen reflective on different panels of the cap. I've seen pictures of kids, um, like say a little league tournament where a youngster has passed away. They've named the tournament after the youngster. They have the name of the tournament on the front two panels. They have a picture of the kid on the side. They might have a location. They might have a date on the back strap. You know, once you start getting to three or four locations of a graphic on a hat. Um, you know, if you can put lettering that's less than an eighth of an inch high from a print cut system, you can still read it. You know, you can't do that by any other medium. You're not going to be weeding thermofilm at an eighth of an inch high, I'm sure. If you do, let me know. <laughs> okay, last question. How do you press a graphic that extends from the bill to the crown of the cap? From the bill to the corner of the cap. The crown of the cap. Oh, oh. Um, in many cases, those designs that you see have been done prior to assembly or they've been done in pieces. Um, depending upon the manufacturer of the cap, you do see some of those all over designs. They are typically done in pieces. They are done overseas where the, the panels are have been decorated before the cap is assembled, and the last thing they're putting on is the visor. So if you wanted to do it from scratch, you could certainly heat press a visor, and very carefully you probably have to cut the graphics and line it up similar to um, 
similar to doing a graphic on a car when you have a car you know when you see these wrap around graphics they do with the print cut systems you see it on a truck you see it on a race car and you see designs all over it they're obviously not doing the panel before they they make the car they're doing it after the fact and they get it as close as they can you'd have to cut the graphic um, you know but a hat is stitched so you have to take that into account it's, diff it's difficult it's not impossible to but it's difficult but to do it seamlessly like you see it in the stores those are done prior to assembly and then they're sewn together all right great Ken thanks so much I think we're all set for today Okay, very good. Thanks very much again for uh, joining Great Garment Graphics. If you have any suggestions for future webinars, feel free to uh, email Great Garment Graphics. Have a great day, and thanks for letting me speak with you today.